Oh boy, we have a lot to cover in this one. Before we get to the new design notes on AQ World Infinity, we're going to check out the Friday post first. Like most Fridays, we will not know everything that was accomplished until the sync up on Monday, but I stole these animated GIFs from the dev chat to show some of the things that's happening. There's a first one. This is a shield skill for the warrior, animated by Nolgath, and then this is the defensive shield. Why are you so defensive? Fireball go boom! That is the animation for the fireball, ba boom We might want to do something a little more particle-based rather than this animated set of images. This is because currently I'm worried about the texture atlas space eating up memory than particle performance. The Umbra class from the first tech demo used a lot of really big sprite sheets cheats to do the animation. That was all right with one functional class, but we have tons of different classes. We could get into a bad situation of exceeding our memory budget because of how many classes they have. So here's another animation. Love the way this looks. Ghost added some bloom using post-processing. He found a bloom shader that claims to only use six CPU cycles instead of four thousand that is insane everyone is in agreement that we do not want to overdo this effect a few players noted that large bulk armors in some of the mounted forms would have their feet stick out of the bottom of the bubble this is exactly what i was concerned about too because of these extreme diversity in AQ World's armors can make it bigger and offset it to give room but there's no way every possible outliner can be handled the alternative would be not doing cool stuff like this at all, which sounds like a worse idea. My philosophy is to do fun and creative stuff. If it works, great. If it does not work for everything, well, it sort of reminds me of that one pixel art Final Fantasy where one class could surpex a train. The absurdity of that made a beloved made it beloved and famous. On that note, can we make a class that sublex monsters? please? I've never played Final Fantasy VI, so I don't know what he's referring to, but let's get into the next design notes. Now, this one here is in regards to AQ World and AQ 3D, so I won't really cover that. This one is focusing on AQ World Infinity, but this is one of the armors coming to AQ World. Very, very nice. This is the ones coming to AQ 3D. Very gorgeous. It is going to be a fun two weeks of releases. Both games, AQ World and AQ 3D, have very interesting story releases that span two weeks, tying Friday the 13th and Talk Like the Pirate Day together in a glorious, twisted way. I am jealous. I really want to get AQ World's Infinity to a place where we can join in on this. It's worth noting once again that the team building AQ World's Infinity does not work on weekly releases for the other games, so our programmers and content team will continue to carve through the remaining infinity task list just to be super clear nothing that the other games or hero mart does disturbs our dedicated teams work on infinity some sort of mega technical emergency like that facebook ip api update thing that we had to fix the other week which brings us to the latest aq world's infinity team update so there's acroloth breathing flames oh man was this thing eating onions? Nongath did some killer animations work on the dragon and the Grugluck this weekend. What is really interesting is he's not using the particle systems at all. This is all traditional sprite-based animation. A random comment in today's team men meeting was, this looks great. Do we even need particles if we can do this? To which the answer of course is yes. Why not both? There he is, collapsing. <laughs> Ghost combat animations are ready to be added. Spider already built the combat system to support things like the mage shield, which you can see the gif of in last week's post. It's worked surprisingly well and feels good. Spider also changed the order of some combat mechanics to feel more natural. This includes skills which regenerate mana. Immortal Joe is pretty eager to get monster skills in. The first thing we want to build is a turret type monster prototype. This is a monster that does not move. It just casts long range attacks if you're in range. Examples are a skeletal mage or a turret. You may have seen some monsters like this in the original version of Adventure Quest Worlds, but it was built using a pretty weird hack. 
Infinity monsters are going to have the ability to be much smarter and do far more impressive things without needing such hacks. Honestly, we have no idea what's going on with that version of Galanoth or why it was placed in the starting area. Absolute game dev nightmare fuel. So you've got this thing slicing the... Uh, I mean, why it's even doing that, I don't know. But look at that. That is so funny. Apparently it's the wrong model. In game dev news, Yoromi finished the monster spawn editor and we can now have requirements for you to see an NPC, like being a certain step of a quest. And also, we can have a random pool of monsters spawn in a pad. Next up, Yoromi is working on the character customization barbershop interface. Tunic fixed a huge number of issues in the dialogue cutscene system. We have a test schedule tomorrow to go over all of the changes. We have a half dozen more feature requests, like being able to scale and move cinematic cutscenes the same way you could scale NPCs. Ghost is continuing on mage class skill animations. He'll be working with Immortal Joe and Spider to implement them. Warlick, Reens, and I spent most of the day battling a serious quest flow issue. You know the old saying, no plan survives first contact with the enemy. We had a plan, tried it, and testing showed that it needs some changes. So we're spending the first hour of tomorrow finalizing our plan before implementing it. This topic feels like something that could have an entire post dedicated to it. So regardless of what happens tomorrow, I will share the story with you. Yay! Nolgath is continuing to work on monster animations for Bloodrut Keep and the other upcoming areas. Aaron X is continuing to glow up monsters and NPCs for the upcoming areas. Also, it was his birthday just recently, and I, I don't know if I said your name. I'm not sure how to say his name. Jongar is working on music. A bunch of old bugs returned out of absolutely nowhere. I do not expect these to take long to fix, but it's a super sketchy after that they returned. We discovered them after the meeting while we were focusing on the quest stuff, so we have not investigated to find out what happened. Needless to say, we will fix them before the tech demo. Tomorrow, I am doing a day-long gauntlet of death Oh, death, sorry, of dev tests for combat, the cutscene system, quests, and core features. I think doing this will help prioritize the top issues and get us to the next tech demo faster. Only one way to find out. Daily posts? We did really good for nearly five weeks straight of daily posts. This week, we're going to have an irregular staggered updates haphazardly appended to the bottom of this post goodness gracious this is a, why is it so hard to read then at the end of this week after the friday please let me know which way you like better next updating posting at the bottom of this page soon but you will not know when until you look schrodinger's post i have no idea what that means here's another big explosion thing that that looks gorgeous though Tuesday was a very intense day. We did the focus testing sprints as previously mentioned. It was very good for the project, but my brain hurts. In the future, we probably should not do all of them on the same day. A couple of the big things we're working on as a result is building the ability to have cutscenes at play before you accept the first quest. Quest flow issue. Fixing a data corruption bug in the dialogue system and adding the ability to move and scale cinematics. Adding the new spell fx to mage testing some solutions for the auto attack animation interruption and mana regeneration issue and of course fixing all those weird issues that came back from their crypt like red skeletons in castlevania happy friday the 13th this week in review for aq worlds infinity we ended the week with a bang of big projectiles if you've been following these design notes, you know that our three big areas of focus have been combat, cutscenes, and quests. We made major movements on all three. For the combat, Spider added the ability for Ghost and Immortal Joe to add skill effects in a module way. The old way we were doing it was not going to work. This improved system gives them control over where and how the spell effects appear. This includes things like the mage's bubble, fireball, and explosions. Ghost made some new effects for mages, but as you can see in the gif above, they are huge. So we spent a little time working on the tool. Just a unity scene with concept 
cu- sorry, custom scripts that Ghost uses to create the effects. Cross your fingers for us for the ready to test mage on Monday morning. Not sure if we talked about this before, but Spider and Joe worked out a solution for the auto attack timing oddities. Short version, it was cutting off the animations of major skills. Now there is just a little padding on the skills so it feels more like the existing AQ Worlds does. Some conversation has gone into the importance of auto attack DPS and the mana regeneration this week. We do not want these remade classes to feel weaker or slower than the originals. The haste stat throws a little monkey wrench at us though. If we want haste to be meaningful, the class has to start off at a speed that is slow enough that it can be improved. This also impacts mana regen because most classes regen mana with the auto attack. Of course, the entire point of having skills use mana. Note, each class can have a uniquely named resource in Infinity. That use mana is because they are so much more powerful than a standard attack that using mana forces you to make a strategic decision of which skill will serve you best in a given movement. Do you hit one skill and unload the DPS or save that mana for when you're going to use the shield skill because you know the monster is going to charge up for a massive attack soon? Endgame players of the existing AQ Worlds Infinity have become accustomed to crazy high crit rates, insane haste speeds, and, well, basically combat gods. I do wonder if they will enjoy going back to simpler times, starting to play through the story fresh, where frogs are still pose somewhat of a threat and your power increases sufficiently with each level and upgrade. Now let me just pause for a minute as I just want to say I am actually really glad that it's just, this is technically like a hard reset in a way. Not really because it's a whole new game, but I really like the idea of being able to start fresh like everybody else and then work on our characters again, being able to experience the stories and the whole reason why we fell in love with AQ World in the first place. You will have two levels, one level in the current AQ Worlds and one in Infinity. I would like for you and other players to be able to see your level and achievements in both. I feel it's important for everyone to visually recognize your achievements across both the games. The team also knows that while it is fun to start fresh, you certainly do not want to do the amount of work to get back to your current level of power, especially if you're an endgame player. So we have been talking about having Infinity's level 20 be roughly the same power as you are used to in the existing game. This would mean completing the remastered main story would get you right back to where you would be comfortable. Again, nothing is set in stone. I'm just sharing these thoughts so that you can talk about them and be part of the conversation. The only way this game can be a success is if you love it. So we will be shaping our decisions around your feedback, both online and in the upcoming tech demo and alpha. I am literally blown away at how transparent Artix is being regarding Infinity. I love that animation. Look at that grug lurk. Cutscenes. Tunic delivered a version of the cutscene tool today that allows us to resize and move the cinematic. Reens is testing it now. Also, a huge number of data data issues were fixed. See, when someone writes about huge fixes, no one except the one person working on them really knows how bad it is. I really need to give Tunic credit. As you may already know, this tool has had too many changes and scope creep additions. It is literally the old joke of starts singing... 100 bugs in the code on the wall, 100 bugs in the code. (laughs) So, ends singing. I am eager to share with you how the testing went on Monday. Oh, boy. So there's Artix with his bubble. Quests. On Wednesday morning, I met with Warlick at the lock, local loves the local at the local diner. For about an hour and a half, we went through every possible combination of ways to show cutscenes in our quest flow. We had all of them but one. The one that every single story saga needs. This may sound like a really easy problem to solve. We need a cutscene that can be triggered when you click on the A pop button to first talk to an NPC. But the specific situation is this NPC has a brand new saga or multiple on them and you have not actually accepted or seen the quest. See, the tricky issue is that you would get the cutscene's ID from the quest, but you have not seen or accepted the quest yet. Sure, we can do it manually. That is, we can build a machine that waits for you to click the button, and then if you have not accepted or completed that quest, then show the cutscene.
scene, but we want to avoid manually adding these types of machines to the maps. First, because literally every single saga will start like this. Second, because if it re if the release rolls out and there's a bug, if we have to edit the map, we need to edit the map file, publish it to the Cloud Builder server, rebuild it to all platforms, and then kick all the players to roll out the new version. Alternatively, if we could just have it in the database like the rest of the quest data, we change the number and type a command, voila, done. Look at that glark glark. Ultimately, Warlick and I came up with an acceptable solution. Not perfect. It mirrors something I dreaded from AQ3D's design phase. We are adding a pre quest cutscene to quests. So if a quest has a pre-quest cutscene, you click on an NPC, it will immediately play the cutscene. This is the perfect way to start a saga from talking to an NPC. You'll see this in Blood Rut. You will see this in every release. But what's dangerous about this is it's the only time you use this field is at the start of the new saga. If any quest in the middle of the saga uses this, it will do incredibly wonky things. You'd see the starting cutscene of the next quest before you even turned in your current quest. Terrible. Furthermore, if an NPC is the starting point of a multiple saga, this will also cause terrible things to happen. So the rules are, this can only be used at the start of the saga, and that saga has to be the only one on the NPC. We made it back from the diner in time to start the day with a team and did one extra hour of reanalyzing and debating the issue with the rest of the crew. Then we gaveled down. Warlick made the database and client changes, and we are waiting on some edge case issues, I think. And then we are testing. Oh, the grug lurk just fell. The story above is a perfect example of the sort of things that every dev goes through, but no goes through, but no one talks publicly about it. I mean, we have built how many MMOs now? Quests would seem like the basic thing, but they're not. When you're improving something and really care about the experience, you always get these unexpected challenges that come up. It is true for any project. But when an Infinity player walks up to a new saga starting NPC and clicks a button, the smooth and fun experience they will have hand will be worth it. Being able to fix the issue by simply changing the number in the database will be worth it. I hope there is something of value for you in these stories. Have an awesome Friday the 13th weekend. Of course, now I'm reading this on a Monday, so it's not quite a weekend, but walks under a ladder straight into a mirror. <laughs> that would only happen on a Friday the 13th. But there we go. That is the news of AQ World Infinity and currently where we are at. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.